Good morning! Today we'll be doing an activity with a homemade pendulum. Our goal will be to measure the acceleration due to gravity. To do this we need to build the pendulum. Well, to build the pendulum all that we need is a string and a weight. And so for the string I use some dental floss, that's all I had. And for a weight I use some Lego. But you can find materials at your home to build a pendulum as well. The weight is known as the pendulum bob. So it's the Lego scene there. That's the pendulum bob. So the formula we'll be using today in order to determine the acceleration due to gravity is the following. To measure the length, it's measured from the point of attachment to the center of mass of the pendulum bob or the center of the Lego that you see there. Period. This quantity is a bit more challenging to measure. It's the time for the bob to travel from position A all the way to position B and then back to A. Now I've circled position A and B. These are the extreme points of movement for our pendulum bob. In other words, this is the maximum displacement of the pendulum from the rest position. Now when the pendulum bob moves from position A all the way to position B and then back to position A, we call that one cycle of motion. So that's what a period is. It's the time to measure one cycle of motion. So to measure time for one cycle of motion, we're not going to use a stopwatch. Many of the activities we've done in the past have involved the use of a stopwatch. Instead, I want to teach you a new skill today, and the skill is to count frames in a video. So how do we count frames? Assuming you're watching this video on YouTube, with the video paused at position A, at an extreme point of the pendulum motion, on a computer you can do the following. You can press the period key to move the video one frame forward at a time. Or you can press the comma key to move the video one frame backward at a time. It's really important that when using either the period or comma key that you're watching the video on YouTube. I'm not sure for other video players how to advance it one frame at a time. In addition, you have to pause the video before using either one of those keys. So to measure time, all we have to do is count frames. So every time you press the period key, we count that as a frame. So we've located the extreme position, the extreme point, the maximum displacement from the rest position for this pendulum. Now we're going to start counting frames for one cycle. I'll be pressing the period key to move the video forward by one frame at a time. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. It seems at fifteen frames the pendulum has reached one extreme position. Let's continue. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. It seems to be exactly 30 frames to go from one extreme position to the other and back. Let's press the period key one more time to see if the pendulum starts going the other direction once again. And sure enough, it does. So it seems that the pendulum takes 30 frames to complete one cycle of motion. All right. From the video you just watched of me counting frames, to go from position A to B, it took 15 frames. And then to go back from B to A, it took another 15 frames. Or, all together, 30 frames for one cycle of motion. Next, we need to know the frame rate. Well, this video was filmed at 30 frames per second. So that means for every second that passes, 
30 individual still images were taken by the camera. To determine time, we divide the frames by the frames per second, that's what FPS stands for, and it just happens to be exactly one second for one cycle of motion for this example. All right, this is the table I need you to complete today. And so we can fill in the first row of data. We can fill in the number of frames and the period. 30 frames, 1.0 seconds. Now the length. So there is an image, and we're measuring to the middle of the pendulum bob, in this case, the middle of the piece of Lego. And so our length seems to be around 0 0.255. 0 0.255 meters, I think, is a pretty good estimate of that measurement. And now, using the formula that I gave you previously in the video, you can determine the acceleration due to gravity. And finally, I'd like you to calculate the percentage difference. To calculate the percentage difference, you're going to take whatever value you got in your experiment today for the g value, for the acceleration due to gravity. So the value you just got in your table. You're going to subtract it by 9.8. Then we're going to divide by 9.8 and multiply by 100%. 9.8 is the accepted value for the acceleration due to gravity. So I've circled that part of the fraction to indicate the use of absolute value. In other words, regardless of whether you get a positive or a negative answer, when you subtract those two numbers, you always have to automatically make it positive because percentage difference traditionally is represented as a positive number. Okay, so now let's get the data from the experiment. Here is the second measurement of length. Now I'm going to play the video so that you can get the period. Here is the third measurement of length. I will now play the video for this length so that you can get the period. Here is the fourth measurement of length. I'm now going to play the video for the fourth length so you can get the period. And finally, here is the fifth measurement of length and I'm going to play the video right now so you can get the period for the fifth measurement of length. So one of the questions I'd like you to answer is what happens to the period if the length does not change but the mass of the bob increases? In other words, say I added two pieces of Lego at either end, what would happen? And the last thing I want to discuss are some of the assumptions we made in using this formula. One of the assumptions is that there's no drag or friction. I want you to think about why it's a valid assumption. And so what I mean by small angle or displacement is that when you move the pendulum bob away from the rest position, you don't move it by a very large amount. And so please complete the table with all the calculations. I encourage you to build your own pendulum and try this experiment for yourself to see if you can get a value close to 9.8. Hope you enjoyed this experiment. Have a great day. Bye-bye.